Hi, everybody. Welcome to the SOS Small Business Success Podcast. Uh, welcome aboard. I'm your host, Bonnie Bonadeo. And our podcast is a weekly podcast that focuses on strategy for small business owners and, and especially those people that are in the service business realm, because we all know that the last year and a half has been quite tough. And we're all about building brands that survive while developing people that thrive. And the people part of the training is what this podcast is all about. Yep, we're sharing with you brand strategies, all that good stuff. But the truth is, is we have to be able to look at where we're at um, on an educational level in order to make the best choices and grow our businesses. So we talk about it from a strategic opportunity for success. And that's kind of where the SOS comes in, other than save our souls, right? And this some strategy that we do here is all about sales operations, mindset, marketing, and education. Those five pillars, those five keystones are the areas that we focus in on every week on the podcast. And also the, the key areas that we focus in on with the SOS coaching program itself. And today we are going to talk about mindset and uh, mindset is, um, Mindset is really looking at our level of emotional intelligence. How emotionally intelligent are we when we are frustrated, when we're happy, when we're sad, when we're, you know, unsure of what the future is going to bring, when uncertainty is staring us in the face, when circumstances happen. And mindset is really being able to make better choices for yourself because we know that being a small business owner is hard. So our, our title today is called Dear Client. But before that, I wanna make a special shout out to my dear friend who has recently passed, Oscar Valencia. Um, he was a leading coach in the industry, very well-liked, very dynamic man. And um, I just, Oscar, just wanna do a shout out to you and say thank you. Thank you for your, your energy. Thank you for your support. Thank you for um, always, you know, thinking of me and making me feel uh, validated and, and special in this industry. And um, until I see you again. All right. And now we're moving on. Okay, guys. So I'm going to just look at this from a standpoint of dear client. Now, some of this might actually trigger you guys because some of you may not be doing some of these things and some of you may be doing some of the things that I'm going to talk about. And I'm actually just going to read it. So... It will look like a letter to a client here, but my goal for this is to be able to have you guys look at it and say, what, how much responsibility should I be taking for poor client relations? How much responsibility should I be taking as the small business owner to be in a service-based business? How much responsibility should I be putting on myself knowing that I'm in a people-oriented business? And people are always the ever-evolving dynamic of success and failure. You could have all the systems in place and still have crazy people walking in as your potential clients, and none of that matters. It goes out the window. So how the level of emotional intelligence that you have is going to make the difference of your success or failure. So I'm going to just read this as we go along. So dear client, first, thank you for choosing me to have you look and feel your best. Some days I think it's just hair, but the truth is your crown is what you wear every day and you should always wear your crown with pride. I'm a small business owner and entrepreneur. And when you compare us to big billion dollar companies of today, it doesn't add up. I've learned a specific set of skills to provide a service, but not all the business skills yet, because those are ever changing and ever evolving. I work hard on my feet with my arms in the air for many hours in a day. My work is physical, mental, and emotional. I wear many hats from owner, manager, technician, as well as the CEO, CFO, COO, CMO and many more that sometimes surprise me like teacher, mentor, therapist, life coach, news anchor, parent, and friend. Although I love what I do most of the time, managing a small business in today's climate and during a pandemic has been quite overwhelming. I wanna share some things that although I know today's consumers have a plethora of resources and information to be more educated than ever, these are areas of opportunities 
to have you find the right stylist and most importantly, get the desired results that you're looking for, for your hair or whatever it is that you're coming to visit us as a service provider for. First, pictures. We love pictures, but please understand the majority of the pictures that you're showing me and a very high percentage of them are Photoshop or altered or might be taken under different lighting conditions. Even for those small few that are not, depending on your hair, it may or may not be achievable or even complement you. So we ask that you let us guide you with what might be best for you, even though you may like a certain look. Our industry has become very independent and most of us are suite or rental stylists, meaning that we have our own business within a business. We aim to be as professional as possible, but many of us don't have access to larger business technology pieces or larger business skill sets at this time. Like any business, we have working hours. I know I've allowed you to text me for bookings, but if I don't text you back right away, it's quite possible that I'm with a client or maybe it's my day off or maybe I'm with my family. I will work on some systems that will allow you to book like a website, online booking links, but please know that because most businesses have business hours, so do I. So please refrain from texting me too early, too late, or on Sundays, or whatever day is most likely my day off. And trust that I'll get back to you in an appropriate amount of time. And on the texting issue, I'd like you to please refer to my website first. And if I don't have one, I will strive to get one that will support you in maybe the questions that you have to the answers that you need. I know that there's plenty of information that you can get resources from, and I appreciate you looking at my website in advance before calling, texting, or trying to get more information while I'm working with other clients. Also, if you're planning on texting me about price and you and uh, you, I don't have price menu on my website, then it's on me and shame on me. I should have the prices available for you to be able to see like any consumer buying any other product at any given location. And those prices, of course, do have some variables depending on your hair, depending on the length of your hair, the density of your hair, the condition of your hair, the types of services that you want. So know that even a price menu sometimes is a general guideline to the type of services that we offer and to the generic pricing that you may be seeing in there. If you continue to text us on pricing, how much is this, how much is that, please know that we can't always predict this via text. If you wanna set up that appointment with us and come in and allow us to do that 15 minute consultation with you, we'll be able to provide you a firm price on the type of work that, you're, that we, we need to do in order to get the desired results that you're looking for. I understand that you have a budget and a quality stylist will accept these consultations at no charge to provide you that understanding of the process and the price. But most importantly, the consultation is designed to build trust. So you feel comfortable moving forward, we feel comfortable moving forward as well. And if it's not worth your time to come in for that 15 minutes and you continue to keep texting us, we have to evaluate whether that 15 minutes is even worth our time. If you're a client that's just negotiating prices with us, then you, you, we don't feel as though you may never be satisfied. Under the current circumstances of the last year and a half, being late, cancellations, and no-shows have increased dramatically in our industry. And we work on a time-based business, okay? We offer services, but we, what we do is we block out time. So when you book out a time, that time is exclusively yours. And when you show up late, it might alter what may need to be done in that allotted amount of time that we've done. So please trust that if we have to have a conversation with you from being late, that we may not be able to complete the service as full, except what we can do in the time that we have. We don't wanna sacrifice any part of your service, but we also can't put the rest of our day or clients following you at the sacrifice of being late or being behind as well, especially if they show up on time. If you're a 
the next client, and, and certainly if you were the next client, you would appreciate and understand that. Now, if you have to cancel at the last minute, we understand that these things happen. If you've canceled at the last minute numerous times, then trust us that we're gonna ask that there be a, a, a credit card down or a cancellation fee in place. I know things come up and there's exceptions to all of these rules, but we work on a time-based calendar and a time-based, you know, hour to hour slot time, and we can't fill them at the last minute. And that does impact us and our day greatly to be able to get more clients in, to be able to work a consistent schedule. If you no show or no call, trust that if we have your credit card down, you will be charged for these things because it's time that can't be replaced in there. Our pricing in our industry <laughs> is all over the map. And that's just due to the level of skill set and experience that most people have. There's many different talents and there's many different price structures, depending on what city, what town, how skilled you are, how long you've been doing it. These will all be variables to the price. Our prices, however, are not negotiable. We charge what we charge based on our experience, our expertise, and client demand. You would not go into a restaurant and negotiate a price for your meal based on, you know, the chef being more experienced or less experienced. Um, so don't come into a salon and try to negotiate prices for everything. But you should, as a client, expect to know what you will be charged. That should never be a surprise to you. And if you've been in a situation where you've been surprised at the end of your service of how much it costs, then shame on us as stylists for not providing you that information in advance. We also want you to understand that unrealistic expectations of your hair is something that we strive to create more clarity on. If we tell you something is going to take a certain amount of time, a certain amount of visits, and a certain amount of money to accomplish, believe us. Showing us your text of someone that will do it for less money or in a faster time per period will only prove that you don't respect the education, the knowledge, and the experience that we're trying to provide for you. In regards to the current times right now, we're going to ask that you please don't ask us whether we've been vaccinated or not. There's so much controversy going on with this topic right now. And the truth is, is it's not okay to ask us in order to feel safe doing it. Many salons have accommodated uh, and upgraded all of their sanitation and cleaning schedules in order to make sure that they are the safest environment that they can be. I know many salons have put on masks and will continue to wear masks, even though the mask mandate is, is being lessened and lightened up right now. Eventually, we're not going to wear masks just like before, and it's not going to be based on whether we're vaccinated or not, and it's not going to be based on whether you ask us whether we're vaccinated or not. Some things should be kept private and personal, and we're asking you under these very trying and political times that that not be something that you bring into us. Men, please don't sexually harass us while we do your hair, and we know who you are. Okay. Allow us to educate you with our knowledge during the service. Inquire about what you can do to have your hair look its best in between visits that might require certain products to achieve or tools or even stylist tips to have it look your best. Relax and enjoy being pampered. We want you to look your best. We want you to love your hair because you truly are a walking billboard for us, our business, and our future growth. So if you look good, we look good. If you don't like your hair, contact us and allow us to get it right. I know sometimes that's a big trust issue if you didn't feel like we did it right the first time. Please don't try to fix it yourself. And if you have to go to somewhere else, someone else, it may actually make it worse. And it would be nice for us to be able to at least consult with you and allow us to try to fix the situation first. Instead of just putting a bad review up without the opportunity to be able to correct maybe the mistake that was made. If you're a salon client and you'd like to try a different stylist, please feel free to do so. I know that sometimes that can feel really uncomfortable for you. And yes, our ego may be a little bruised um, if you choose to go to another stylist within our salon, but we want you to stay in the salon. And most importantly, we want you to find the right person that you're comfortable with to have your hair done. And like all things in life, prices will increase. Please accept that our cost of goods, our tools, our products, 
and all of the education that we still have to continue to invest in has gone up. However, all of our skill sets sometimes under these circumstances have gone up as well. So if we've taken classes that have cost us hundreds, even thousands of dollars to learn some new skills and some new trends, trust that that up levels our level of expertise so that we can do more types of services on more types of clients. We are a very diverse and licensed regulated industry governed by our state boards. There's hours required in every state, continuing education in many states for us to maintain and keep our license. Our license is part based on skill set that we've learned. The other part of it is based on sanitation and, um, and understanding all of the health concerns that might be going on in regards to keeping things clean and sanitary. We're also an industry that must keep investing in learning new skills, new technology, new products, and new trends. Those are investments that we must make in order to be relevant and to grow our business. But we're also creative humans, small business owners, providing a service to our clients and our communities. So we're doing the best we can with what's available to us, especially during these times. We love what we do. The service business, the people business, it can be challenging at times and especially now, but we're passionate souls that will continue to bring beauty to you and the world. And we all know that we want to be more beautiful souls inside and out. So thank you for listening to us and we appreciate you being a wonderful client. All right, guys, so I know that I probably left out some things that you're dealing with, that you're fighting over, that you're frustrated with when it comes to our industry and the people business. But if some of those things you don't have available to you, like a website, like a good strong brand identity, ways to be able to communicate with your clients, price menus, uh, understanding how maybe to effectively do price increases, you're a salon owner, a suite owner, and you're struggling with any of these, then get the support that you need and book a free session with me. And you can do that at www.sossaloncoaching.com. And remember each and every week, the SOS uh, podcast airs every Wednesday. And uh, if you'd like to be a guest, I would love to hear from you. And if you uh, would like to listen to it, you know that you can find it on Anchor, iTunes, Spotify, and many other wonderful podcast platforms. Uh, share it with a friend, and I look forward to chatting with you guys again soon. Until next time, thanks for being with me. <laughs>